It was the night before Christmas, in a place white and cold. The cute little penguin was out for a stroll, skipping along filled with glee, filled with joy. In his flipper he cradled his favorite toy. Little did the penguin know that on this fateful day, a cold breeze, a gust of wind, would blow his favorite toy away. So he looked and he looked, his beak covered in frost. He looked up from his search and realized, Oh no, I am lost. Not only his toy, but his path was gone too. And our poor little penguin knew not what to do. So he began walking with no hope in sight. Until, from a distance, he could see a small light. As he moved ever nearer, it was clear it was a home. And outside, in the front, he could see a small gnome. The gnome shoveled this way and that and was squinting and muttering, Fiddlesticks, they have gone missing. He dug in the snow as the penguin, quite shy, cleared his cold little throat and said, Mister, might I ask your help? I don't know where I am. I am lost. I can't find my way through the snow and the frost. The gnome said, I would like to help you. I would, but my glasses are gone and my sight isn't good. If I could but find them, if they could be found, then I could assist you. They must be around. Where did you have them last? Asked the penguin, so cute. The gnome thought and answered, While gathering fruit, I was out picking berries, and the snow, how it fell. It frosted my lenses. I couldn't see well. I removed them to wipe them, but they slipped from my hand. And now they are gone. So you must understand that were I to guide you, you might go astray. If I can't find my glasses, I can't see the way. The lost little penguin felt sympathy for the sad, sightless gnome. And he set out once more, but instead of attempting to get home in haste, he would look for the glasses the gnome had misplaced. Maybe this rock was the place where he'd find the gnome's glasses, but no, they were nowhere behind. Could the glasses be here on the stump of this tree? They were not, it appeared. But where could they be? The berry bush seemed like a wise place to search. And there, on a branch, like a bird on its perch sat the glasses just where they had fallen. And so the penguin retrieved them and turned back to go. He'd get back to the gnome and return him his sight. Then once again face his disheartening plight. Being lost wasn't fun, but the penguin was glad that he'd gotten to help and was happy he had. Why, you found my glasses, the tiny gnome cried. I can't thank you enough. Will you join me inside? The penguin said, Thank you, but no, for I should try to find my way home through this cold 
lonely wood. The gnome said, oh yes, you had mentioned before that you knew not the way to your very own door. Well, now that I see, I am happy to say those candy canes there, they will show you the way. The penguin continued to walk down the track. When he came to a crossroads and taken aback, he tried to decide which direction to go. But without a clear answer, just stood in the snow. You look like a guy who's in need of a hand, came a voice, and the penguin did not understand where the voice could have come from. For no one was there save for three mounds of snow piled up in the air. Down here, said the voice, turn those peepers down south. I may look like pebbles, but I'm a really a mouth. On the ground lay some buttons, a carrot, some stone, which moved as it chattered in the snow on its own. You need some guidance, said the stones, and I reckon we can work something out if you give me a second and put those there bits that you see in their place. You get your directions, and I get my face. As a face maker, you've got impressive technique, said the snowman, and look, now we both got a beak. Much better, he said. This was a good plan. Let me take a good look at you now that I can. The snowman was proud of the features he wore. He thanked his new friend and said, Look, I am sure that you won't have no trouble if you go to the right. But make sure that you're out of the woods before night. The penguin did not stick around, wait or dawdle, and set off at once, to the right with a waddle. But though he walked on just as fast as he might, soon dusk was upon him, and thereafter came night. Why, it's too dark to see, said the bird with a chill, when he tripped and he slid down the side of a hill. Deep in the woods, in the dark, all alone, frightened and tired and chilled to the bone, the poor little penguin, under stars bright and twinkling, was certain he heard far away a light tinkling. Was the sound he heard crickets? Was it ice in the trees? Or perhaps running water? Or a lyrical breeze? As he moved ever nearer, though it seemed far away, he felt sure it was bells, like you'd find on a sleigh. The penguin was moving past branches and bark, when a man turned around and stepped out of the dark. The man said, My goodness, you're only a child. What brings a young penguin out here in the wild? It wasn't on purpose, said the cold little bird. Perhaps, said the man, I could see you chauffeured to your home in my sleigh. For unless I am wrong, it's the next on my route, and the trip won't take long. After waving goodbye to the man dressed in red, the penguin was eager to climb into bed. 
He was glad to be home, but his grief was still there, for his toy remained lost in the cold winter air. But his mama was waiting with a blanket and tea. There were songs in his heart and bright lights on the tree. Even without his toy, he could hardly believe just how happy he was on this cold Christmas Eve.